This is the big one, guys. The moment we've all been waiting for. Season 9's changes are right around the corner, and we've got a blog post that's breaking down all of the major differences that you're going to experience to Overwatch coming very, very soon. So, kicks off like this. The newest season of Overwatch 2 is just around the corner, and with it comes with some exciting changes. During our Overwatch 2 What's Next panel at BlizzCon 2023, we shared a sneak peek at some of the philosophy guiding many of our system changes this year, striving to make PvP gameplay more rewarding and fun, providing greater transparency for players in-game. We introduce major changes to competitive in the new season, from a new progression system to an all-new tier above Grandmaster, as well as major gameplay changes to combat and hero survivability. Put a major asterisk on that, guys. That's the one you want to tune in for the most, because they haven't said anything about that so far. Read on for details on what you can expect with Overwatch 2 Season 9 Champions. Updating the competitive experience. We've heard your feedback on competitive play over the last eight seasons, and we have some big updates coming that will give you the opportunity to build your skills and see how you progress through the competitive ranks. We built a better system that's more accurate while also helping convey the meaning behind the mathematical complexity of a modern matchmaker and bring clear insights about what impacts your rank each and every match. Seeing how and why your rank changes. One piece of feedback we heard is that just knowing your rank doesn't say anything about your rank, why your rank went up and down. Competitive updates originally worked to provide updates that reflected your growth as a player across multiple matches, but with the goal to provide greater transparency in each individual match. We're going back to updating your rank after each match and showing how much progress you gain or lose between each skill division. We're also displaying modifiers that affected your last match below the rank progression bar. Some modifiers help provide transparency in the matchmaking for each match, like getting a boost when you defeat a team that was more favored to win, while other modifiers show if your rank is calibrating, like going on a huge win streak, providing you with a uh, higher, providing you belong in a higher rank. Feedback is a driving force behind these changes, and we want to hear your thoughts on competitive play now that you'll have more context for each game. So here we've got a visual of what it's going to look like now and all the different modifiers that they can add to your rank progression. So they've got rank promotion progress. The progress bar shows uh, shows how much your rank increased as a result of a match. The bigger the highlighted section, the more rank was gained or lost. The reason why more rank might have been gained or lost are explained by the modifiers below. So a few different green ones will be like if you're on a win streak, if you were not favored, it could be an uphill battle. If you get some uh, constellation where you were favored, but you lost. So it like kind of... Uh, downgrades how much you lose, I guess, with a little bit of green, even if you do go in the red. Other ways that the negative uh, modifiers can be applied, if you're on a loss streak, if you were favored and lost, that's really bad. That's the ones you really want to avoid when the matchmaker favors you to win and you somehow lose. Um, if your calibration matches change. So what calibration is, is basically like a pseudo placement system. So whenever they talk about having a soft ranked reset, that's kind of what they mean, where they have a bit of a pre predicted rank for you. And then you go through playing and it will modify more quickly based on your performance in those games during that calibration period. So next section here, they've talked a lot about the rank stuff. I'm really excited for the things after this, but we'll get to that. Bring a fresh start with placement matches and ranked resets. Both the changes to competitive play and the broader changes to gameplay starting this season, we feel this is a perfect opportunity for everyone to have a fresh start as they compete on ranked leaderboards. To accomplish this, we're introducing placement matches and resetting everyone's competitive skill rank. Your journey to the top begins with 10 all new placement matches with everyone's ranks being reset. These 10 matches, these 10 placement matches provides you with a high stakes opportunity to make big gains in determining your new starting rank. As you progress through placement matches, there will be a predicted rank uh, starting at each match. You'll only have one chance this year to run your placement matches. So pick your best heroes and stay hydrated because these games count for a lot. So this is what I was kind of mentioning earlier, where 
it's what it's going to do now is you you get reset but it still thinks you're going to be a certain rank so you kind of have to or should aim to perform up to that rank so that you can quickly get to it and maybe even surpass it if you're on a on a hot streak the downside of this is like you really want to perform your best in these moments because they're overweighted to kind of give you a a kickstart uh, and light a fire under you to get excited for the new season. Um, but the downside is if you underperform, you know, you're, you're going to uh, maybe fall a little lower than you would have liked. So that's like the downside to it. It's very volatile. And they're only going to do this volatile ranked soft ranked reset once a year. So this is like your chance to come in and try to uh, get some boosts in on your profile. So rise up to the rank of champion. So how high can you go? We're introducing the ultimate rank champion this is the most prestigious tier above grandmaster intended to show who is the best among the most skilled players in the game even with the boosts that placement matches can provide top ranking players will still need to win a lot of games to reach champion one and prove they are the best of the best this is the most exclusive rank in the history of overwatch and we're on the edge of our seats to see who could achieve such heights in season nine and beyond so this is similar to uh, other games like I can think of StarCraft added like a, a Grand Master rank or Super Grand, uh, whatever. They always add like a rank above, and this helps delineate those players that are um, way above in top 500 from the uh, other players that can't even make it, but still are technically the top rank. This was required, I think, for top players to really get any value out of that high end ranked experience. So that's a good thing. New competitive rewards and Jade weapons. Season nine introduces Jade weapon variants, unlockable with new 2024 competitive points. Earning Jade weapon variants will reflect your dedication to competitive play in 2024, not your highest ranked achieved. This is important because prior to this, the old system was if you were higher rank, you kind of got showered with the currency to get the gold weapons. So higher ranked players had all of them very easily. And if you were a metal ranked player, it was really hard to get. It's good to know that this is like a different way they're going about it, that everyone can feel involved no matter your skill tier. So let's see how they're doing that. Luckily, these new Jade weapon variants will not be as exclusive as the champion rank you will progress towards earning competitive points just by playing the game mode with more progress granted towards wins competitive points earned for winning and drawing a match have been rebalanced around this new progression system which should make every match feel rewarding regardless of the outcome i like this um i'm not so big on the crazy weapon skins but green is my favorite color so i want to get these right away myself and I, I i don't like this the uh suggestions of the type of things that will like transform my skins i kind of like that the skins are uniform in overwatch but they do have a bit of a problem where other games have weapon skins easily and lots of cost customization for them um i personally like it low key like this but we'll see what they do in future Thankfully, now it's a little bit more based on just playing the game as opposed to what rank you finished at the end of the season, carrying how much of that currency you get. Next section says legacy competitive points and golden weapons. Through the end of season eight, players can still earn competitive points towards, uh, towards unlocking golden weapon variants. When season nine starts, your previously earned competitive points will be converted to legacy points. Great. It says you'll still be able to use legacy competitive points to unlock golden weapon variants, but the way you receive legacy competitive points will change. Once the 2024 competitive year closes, any leftover 2024 competitive points will automatically be converted and added to your legacy competitive points, which can be used to unlock golden weapon variants. Great. Okay. La end of season. Last last chance to claim end of season bonuses log into season eight grab your rewards blah, 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 blah. okay we we don't want that of a way too long introducing changes to core gameplay beyond the competitive rework season nine features major changes to the fundamentals of overwatch 2 gameplay that affect every hero we've heard community feedback around some gameplay pain points and developed changes to the core gameplay with these goals in mind number one Deliver a more consistent feel to firing and landing your shots on opponents. Number two, lessen the impact of burst damage and allow for greater counterplay. And three, adjust where in-game healing and damage are effective to reduce stagnant teamfights. 
yes, <laughs> they, they did this. Uh, all of these changes have been designed to work in combination to balance each other out, and we're excited for you to get in game and experience them. Making your shots feel good to hit. Our One of our main goals with these adjustments is to make firing your weapon and abilities feel more consistent without impacting the time to eliminate a target and without removing the overall feel of gameplay we know and love. That's all very complicated. It, it'll make more sense as we go on. When examining how burst damage values have changed over time, we found that in most cases, they, they're gone down in raw value. Though that might not necessarily mean they become weaker relative to other changes. The 5v5 environment and new heroes of Overwatch 2 certainly factor into the perspective, but it's often overlooked that the player base's average skill, game knowledge, and pace of gameplay are relatively higher now than when the game first launched. So players are actually getting better overall, which is an interesting thought to have. Now, um, I don't like this paragraph very much, very obtuse. Instead, let's get into what they're actually doing, okay? Projectile size changes. All projectiles are getting bigger. The, these numbers are kind of obnoxious to read, but all hit scan projectiles with a higher rate of fire go up a bit. The hit scan projectiles go up a bit. The actual projectiles go up a bit. Everything is easier to hit in this new version of the game. Everyone has more health. Everything is easier to hit. The connectivity of the gameplay is easier overall, which I think will provide a bit of a knee-jerk reaction. I don't actually like how they're talking about it in this blog post. I'll go into a bit more detail after saying that, but what this does in the gameplay is that there's less about like insta-dying or nothing can die, right? There's a lot of times in Overwatch where you feel like there's certain targets that are so zippy and immobile or, or mobile Kiriko, Sojourn, for example, there are certain things you just feel like you have to have insane shot to accuracy to have a chance to hit them. Whereas now that everything is smoothed out a bit more, you can feel like you're consistently landing impact and it doesn't necessarily make or break the engagement immediately. Like you whiff, 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 <laughs> and nothing dies because the healing's so high or you insta-kill the thing. That's like old Overwatch. Now everything's a bit more consistent and has a good response responsiveness to it. All right. When it comes to aiming as a mechanical skill requirement, even players with excellent aim often mention how hard, how it can feel random, whether shots hit or not. Due largely in part to the whip speed movement acceleration heroes have when changing directions, combined with all of the dashing, leaping, teleporting abilities, hitting your target can be very difficult. Crisp, responsive movement is important to core Overwatch gameplay feel, so we wouldn't want to just slow down player movement. Remember, at the start of Overwatch 2, they actually considered slowing down the movement. They're like, oh no, we can't do that. But they they thought that they might make everyone a bit slower just so that shots were easier to hit. So that's the, one of the first experiments they tried in the early beta that they were talking about that they went back uh, against, actually pre-alpha. We never even got to play that version of the game. But... Um, so instead, we're improving hit consistency by making both damage dealing hit scan and travel time projectiles larger. Heroes that have weapons or abilities that don't benefit from any projectile size changes will receive additional balance changes. However, we don't want to make too many hero adjustments before getting a better understanding of the effects from these initial changes. So tune in for more on individual heroes in future updates. Okay. That this, that right there, massive, massive change. The entire game will play entirely differently. Like you have no idea how impactful that change will be. And I think my easy answer to why I think this is a good thing is that I went from playing Counter-Strike for thousands of hours for years to playing Valorant eventually, like after Overwatch, of course, but we made a Valorant channel. We loved that game. And one of the major defining differences between Valorant and CSGO is shots are just easier to hit. Like the game's more responsive. You feel like you can contribute more reliably, whereas CSGO felt more punishing and the characters more easily slid out of your perfect pixel accuracy aim. And uh, there's a skill ceiling to that, most definitely. But what I get even more excited about is that 
this will make the game easier to balance because one of the major problems the dev have the devs have is a character like sojourn or kuriko who have negative win rates for almost the entire population but then at the highest tiers of play are the most insane possible heroes because they both have small hitboxes great mobility and high accuracy lethality so if you are a top skilled player and have the movement and aim you're dominant on these picks and then everyone else is just like eh, do we even really contribute on these or should we play easier characters and the win rates of course uh, uh contribute to that argument like if you, why would 95 percent of players get more value out of life weaver who more or less kind of just hangs out in the back as opposed to kariko as broken as she is right like kariko is much harder to play requires a lot more skill you have to go in and hit shots in order to make the character work now that it's more uh that this is crushing the skill ceiling and skill floor don't like miss uh, label the terms here. That in theory sounds like a bad thing, but from the balance point of view, we don't have to have such a separate world between the two skill tiers of our game or the multiple skill tiers of our game, really, where the, the people who can aim and the people who aim a little and the people who aim barely at all, right? Like, uh, it'll make it more smoothed out so that the, the numbers they can give the characters otherwise in the rest of their kits can be more streamlined to affect uh, the entire game. So we'll have a more balanced game, I think, uh, once these changes come through here in season nine. Now, the next change is to health pools. Adjusting health pools to balance gameplay. Since we're increasing the average accuracy of nearly all heroes and want to keep time to kill similar, we're also increasing everyone's maximum health. We've already balanced damage values, damage boosts, critical damage breakpoints, and other factors around 200 to 250 HP heroes. So the new health ends up requiring at least one more hit from most heroes to eliminate an enemy. So the time to kill is going up. They, want, they say they want to keep it relatively the same, but overall, all, the all time to kill is a bit longer now, which I think ultimately is a good thing and will feel good when you try it. The health pool changes. So if you're a character with 150 health, you get an extra 25. I believe that's just Tracer, right? So Tracer takes another uh, hit potentially. 200 to 300 HP heroes get 50 extra health and 300 HP tanks get somewhere between 700 and 100 extra health. That's a significant amount of extra health on, on these characters, but there is more changes to consider in the health department. Health is very important because it's the amount of sustainability you will have with your own agency where you put your face and your time to kill against the thing in front of you. In Overwatch, prior to this change, there's a lot of times where those matchups you might take are so out of your favor, you have to run from them because you don't have the stats to deal with the situation in front of you. You need a teammate to reliably contribute. And I think the hitbox changes as well as your health, this, these are individual agency buffs, and even more so will be this next one. We also want to make sure that the flow of the team fight doesn't take away from individual player decisions that can determine the outcome of a match. Tanks already have a significant role in each team fight as they often are the ones to take space and determine where each fight takes place. Whereas we want to enable more critical decision making among the damage and support roles. The changes to projectile and size and health pools effectively reduce the impact of burst damage and tones down the relative strength of healing. Important, right? Because you have so much more health, like healing adds to the contribution of a fight, but it's not like make or break, right? That That's important because you might just have extra health to win the duel anyway, especially as a tank on a squishy now it, when there's no healing involved. Keep that no healing involved uh, idea for the next section. Meaning it will take longer to heal someone from one HP to full health to ease the friction of an increased time to fully heal allies out of combat and enable support players to make more informed decisions on who to heal, everyone can now regenerate health passively at a rate of 20 healing per second after five seconds of not taking damage. And the support role passive heal can be adjusted, uh, has been adjusted to 2.5 seconds. So it was actually nerfed and then everything else gets some healing too. This was the self-healing passive that they talked about way back um, five seconds is forever. So this just means you kind of eventually generate your own health pack out of combat. The, the, five seconds is forever, honestly. Uh, I think it will matter when like your support is running back from spawn, you might be able to heal. Um, also, it means your supports maybe can uh, apply a bit more offense in those moments instead of have to be able to heal the tank. But overall, uh, th th this is like the least important 
change and that's the only one they teased <laughs> prior to this the rest of this stuff is insane and this one's like i, I don't know five seconds whatever like <laughs> teleport to a health pack or self-heal there's not really a, a big difference in my opinion an increased health pools and weakening of burst damage means that heroes live longer in team fights will take longer to conclude to combat some of the potentially extreme situations here we're also introducing a new dps passive empowering them to more easily fulfill their role in securing eliminations, reduce in-game he healing, in-game in combat healing specifically, and potentially add an additional strategic layer to focus firing targets. So, roll passive. So all heroes get the passive to self-heal. The damage get a new passive. Dealing damage reduces the target's healing received by 20%. Okay, <laughs> complicated numbers. This means every damage dealer applies a small anti-heal effect to what they're targeting. That is insane. So what that means is all healing is nerfed anyway. Anytime a DPS is involved in combat, the thing they're focusing on will get a small anti-heal debuff applied to them. That's an insane passive if you think about it and changes all of these breakpoints because not only now do targets have more health, the decision making of what the damage applies to nerfs those healing values more. So I, I think team shooting is way, way more powerful now because your raw stat advantage of all, all your characters and their characters have more health overall, right? But if the DPS target more efficiently now, then your ability to like leverage a skill gap in the time to kill of the whole team and the whole team fight is massive. Like DPS have a massive tool now. And if you think about it, um, is, there, there's probably some instances, I don't know how long that, maybe they'll explain here in a sec, how long that debuff lasts, but it applies to all healing. And some of the tankiest characters in the game, the two ones are, of course, the tank themselves, who are going to bear the brunt of this effect because they're the easiest thing to hit, but very importantly, the support role who have a self-healing passive as well as many ways to heal themselves and each other. Supports will be much, much easier to target now because think about it before, the easiest thing to target in the entire game was the other damage. You as the damage try to like s hope the enemy damage went too far out of the safety of the two roles that are actually powerful and then you target them first. Damage were always dying first in the old version of the game. Well, now, you apply that uh, minor anti-heal to something, you can more effectively take down a support character. And of course, the tank is taking another L in this patch, as they always do. Um, but really, healing's taking an L, I would feel. And I, I think really working as a team around that DPS player is going to matter a lot more now, and especially focus firing together. Because you can imagine something like Winston's Tesla Cannon, which is really easy to hit, will now have a much more impressive impact when you're fighting your, with your DPS. Because prior to that, it was like, I don't know, Brig or Life Weaver or whoever would just like shimmy away, self-heal for a hundred and then use their escape abilities to get away as well. And you're just like, wow, I, I'm playing Overwatch 1 and they're playing Overwatch 2. Well, now you have a teammate that is going to really shrink how much um, health they're going to get from that kind of stuff. And your time to kill together will be a lot better in team shooting for sure. So the support role... Uh, passive was updated to be 2.5 seconds. It used to be two seconds, I believe. So a small nerf to that. And here's the last little point. And my, my cold is getting the best of me here at the end of the video. At its core, Overwatch 2 is a competitive game. So it's important for the core systems and competitive systems to be as intuitive and accessible as possible. In addition to the core uh, systems changes, we're introducing reworks to Fara and Junkertown, which we'll go into in a later blog. For now, let us know what you think about Overwatch 2 Season 9 Champions, and it launches February 13th, the day before Valentine's Day. Wow. Uh, guys, we're going to have another video covering this more in depth. I'm excited to know what you guys think. I am ecstatic about these changes because I think it makes Overwatch a much more playable as well as sensible game where... Prior to this, it was like the mistakes came in so hard and fast. It was so punishing. You mo you moved, you exploded. Whereas now, I think there's a lot more freedom to like uh, express yourself individually as well as giving 
a very much needed passive to the DPS role, who previously kind of just like didn't have one this whole time. We're just like, well, everyone else is playing Overwatch 2 and over uh, the DPS role is cosmetic until they hit Q or something. Like it's, th these are very good changes overall. I think you're really going to like playing this. A lot of it looks on paper to be scary change, but I think this will be a much more playable and fun version of the game. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave it a like and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to actually get notified when our videos come out. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.